In this video, we'll cover some of the more advanced features of editing a shapes pattern, specifically animating a shapes parameters. In our shapes basic video, we learned that a shapes pattern has three individual layers, each with a shape, a size, and a fill color. Any of these attributes can have animations applied to them, which is what we'll do now. We'll begin with a single red shape in the center of the LED array. Tap the animation icon on the right side of the center slider and choose Turn Animation On. The Edit Animation button will now become active. Tap it. We're now in the Animation Editor. The animation for this shape is currently set to a very simple back and forth motion. At the top of the Animation Editor, we have options to choose a wave type and to toggle Invert on and off. The wave types are Linear, Quadratic, and Quintic. Linear makes the center move at a constant rate across the lights. Quadratic introduces some easing so that the shapes move slowly at first, speed up, and then slow down at the end. Quintic is similar to quadratic, but the easing is increased at both ends. Invert toggles whether the animation starts at the top or the bottom of the wave. Use this when you want two shapes with the same animation, but that start at opposite points, as in the bicolor sweep default pattern. Below the wave toggles is a preview for the shape illustrating how all of this shape's current animation settings manifest visually on Color Spike. Below that is a representation of only this attribute's animation settings, in this case, center. Below the wave toggles is a graph that gives a visual representation of how the animation plays out. As you adjust values and wave types, the graph reflects how those adjustments change the animation. Let's move down to the sliders. Center controls what the middle value of the animation is, with zero being the center of the LED array. As with a static center, this value can be set to make the entire animation take place partially or completely off the LED array, so once again, be careful not to lose a shape off the canvas entirely. Range controls how far from the center the animation travels. A wide range can send the shape off both ends of the color spike, like so while a narrow range will move at only a small amount around the center. The speed slider controls how fast this individual animation runs. It is different from the global speed slider in that it only controls the speed of this particular setting. A high animation speed combined with a high global speed can produce some very fast animations, often too fast, so use speed wisely. The step size slider controls how coarse or fine the animation is, with zero being perfectly smooth and getting gradually more stepped as you increase the value. At 100% we have what is called a square wave, which simply toggles the animation between its minimum and maximum, with no in-between values. The bias slider controls whether the animation is weighted in either direction meaning it completes one half of the animation more quickly than the other. Setting this slider to plus or minus 100% creates a sawtooth wave where only half of the animation performs and then immediately resets back to the beginning position. It's possible to combine bias and step size to accidentally create a shape that doesn't move at all. This is easy to see in the graph. The last slider is random, which int introduces a bit of randomness into each animation. The wave will still target its endpoints, but depending on how much randomness we've added, allows those endpoints to drift within that range on each loop. A shape center set to the whole range of the LED array and set to 100% random can land anywhere on Color Spike. These six parameters can be combined in various configurations to create countless unique effects. When you're finished editing the animation, tap the back button on the top left to return to the shape editor. You'll see that the slider for the attribute you are editing is no longer manually selectable, and the updates with the animation as the values change. You can turn this animation off at any time to return to the static values it was already set at. Turning animation back on will restart whatever animation you previously created. 
The size animation pane is very similar to the center animation pane, with some small differences in the ranges of the sliders and the previews. While the center preview shows how the animation travels across the LED arrays, the size preview simply shows how the size changes over the course of the animation. The graph, rather than showing a representation of Color Spikes LEDs, instead shows a range representing how many LEDs will be filled by the shape. The out of bounds area at the bottom represents negative values. A shape will not draw when it has a negative value, which can be used to create interesting effects. The fill animation pane is also much the same as the center, the major difference being the visual representation of the palette behind the graph, showing how your animation travels through the colors available to it. The shape's fill will be selected from the palette during this animation. Refer to our video on the palette for more info.